actually really excited for the cryo cannon changes that are coming there's going to be almost no reason to run the flamethrower anymore with the one exception being you could get away with using the sticky flame build on the flamethrower and then probably the biggest change i think that's coming and maybe a lot of people might not think it's going to be as big as it is is that any swarmer which is the little bugs that are extremely annoying so that any swarmer that gets frozen will die as soon as it gets frozen it won't come out of freeze with a little bit of health like it does right now quickly all of the changes that will be coming so all of the nurse all of the buffs that are coming tomorrow with update 32 and then we're going to end with some closing thoughts on how the builds in the meta i think are going to be changing so starting off with the engineer his sentry gun is going to be changing the base damage is going to be increased from five to six damage per bullet the gemini system now comes with 90 extra ammo and the defender system damage bonus is going to be changed from a percentage to a flat plus five. These changes are gonna hopefully get people to use the Gemini system more, which is the double sentry, uh, sentry gun, so you can drop two sentry guns. The lure grenade on the engineer's kit is no, uh, no longer gonna take damage from friendly fire. So that was always a pretty big weakness of this grenade. It has 50 health, and if anyone on the team shot it, it would destroy it quicker. So especially with friendly fire from from big blasts like the driller's satchel charge or the engineer's PGL, we'd see the lure not really get a lot of uh, effectiveness. It would end kind of prematurely because of the friendly fire destroying it. And for those that don't know what the lure grenade is, is it's a grenade that creates like a holo hologram of a dwarf and distracts nearby enemies so they attack the grenade instead of you or the team or you or your teammates the deep core pgl which is the grenade launcher on the engineer base armor breaking has been increased to 100 percent the incendiary compound mod direct damage reduction now affects armor breaking as well so what that means is the mod on the pgl is going to be a little bit more effective at breaking armor and what breaking armor breaking armor on enemies does is it makes the weak point on them larger and easier for you or your teammates to hit some of the area of effect damage so the area effect bonus from the nails and tape mod has been added to the base weapon the max ammo stat will now include the round and the launcher that since there's no magazine size stat for this weapon so just a little um, UI tweak the hyper propellant overclock there's been a increase to direct damage bonus a ammo penalty has been applied the crosshair when the overclock has equipped has been modified and now it has its own impact effects in trail so just a couple changes to better situate it in the overclock meta the rj250 compound overclock on the deep core pgl has got a couple changes as well the knockback on the overclock falls off more the farther away you are from the explosion uh, from the explosion center improve the control a player has over the angle at which they will be launched so just a couple adjustments to that overclock this is the overclock that you can uh, shoot at terrain near you and it'll launch you away kind of like the special powder overclock on the scouts jury rig shotgun the breach cutter we've got quite a lot of changes here so The base magazine capacity has been decreased. Some of the baseline width of the breach cutter lasers from the tier two loose and no cohesion have been moved to the base of the, the weapon. The base reload time has been increased. The tier three line width mod has been replaced with a reload speed mod. So if you had if you have it currently equipped it'll be replaced by the new one the mod in tier 3 is called loosened node cohesion and before update 32 it increased the beam width by one meter this will now increase the or 
it'll improve the reload speed of the weapon which makes sense because they made their base reload time worse the bonus in tier one high capacity magazine has been increased so now it's a better effect with how they decrease the base magazine size in general they decreased the bonus of the tier two expanded ammo bags they also decrease the hitbox height of the triple split line mod in tier 5. And then we've got a few overclock changes, lightweight casings, high, velo high voltage crossover, spinning death, and inferno overclocks will now match the new magazine capacity. The inferno overclock now ignites targets quicker and keeps them burning for an extended period of time. And then the spinning death overclocked overclock they added a line with bonus so a lot of the changes that we're seeing to the engineers overclocks are just to make um make them a little bit more competitive to some of the overclocks that have been really been taking over the meta especially for the breach cutter where most people just run the clean overclocks over the rest of the overclocks in general the gunner doesn't have too many changes going on the only change is going to be to the Thunderhead Heavy Auto Cannon. The combat, the combat mobility overclock is going to have an increase to movement speed bonus, which the movement speed of the gunner has just always been a very significant weakness. Um, it's done so by design because of how much damage he's given. So having a mo movement speed bonus to the auto cannon is going to be a pretty big change. Uh, the combat mobility overclock on the Auto cannon also has an added accuracy bonus. The damage penalty has been replaced with a reduced magazine capacity and they've added a reload speed bonus. So a bunch of changes to the auto cannons combat mobility overclock to make it a lot more competitive with everything else in the the auto cannon has to offer for overclocks. That was the only only gunner change to the the only gunner change was that overclocks changes. Reload penalties on overclocks. I would say that's a, a indirect soft buff to Born Ready, which you should probably be using on the gunner anyway because of how slow because of how slow the autocannon reloads. It's like a five second base reload time, which is really, really long. It's the longest in the game. The scout's got a, quite a few changes to his weapons. The M1000 Classic has a couple. The and and I think some of the these changes are going to affect the builds that I run on the M1000 Classic. I think the my favorite build on the M1000 Classic is going to change a little bit. The M1000 Classic's focus speed has been. Um, increase so the the base focus speed has been increased and the focus speed bonus of the tier 2 mod fast charging coils has been decreased to compensate so now fast charging coils is not going to be as effective so we'll, we'll probably want to switch off of that since the the base uh focus speed of the weapon is going to be better the ammo bonus of expanded ammo bags in tier one has been increased and the active stability overclock has a focus speed bonus that's been added and they replaced the focus shot damage penalty with a reload speed penalty. So already we're kind of seeing a theme that they're taking away a lot of the damage penalties on the overclocks and replacing them with the reload speed penalties or ammo penalties which i think is a really good change a lot of the overclocks were kind of unusable because they just killed your damage the zakov nuk 17 is going to have quite a few changes the tier one expanded ammo bags mod has been increased they've moved some damage from the tier three increased caliber rounds mod to the base weapon and then quite a few changes to the embedded detonators overclock on the weapon. 
the damage belt the damage dealt when reloading has been greatly increased they've changed the damage type from kinetic to internal damage increased direct damage penalty added magazine capacity penalty increased ammo penalty and then if a uh, if an enemy you're shooting can, can be killed by reloading, an icon will te temporarily appear next to its health bar. Um, so for those that don't know what that overclock is on the Nux, the overclock is called Embedded Detonators, and it has special bullets that contain micro explosives that detonate when you reload the weapon at the cost of total ammo and direct damage. So with the changes that we'll be getting, we'll be get, getting some changes to that to make it a little bit more effective. The Deep Core GK2 AI Stability Overclock now gives a large bonus to weak point hits and has an increased base damage penalty. The Pheromone Canister on the Scout is uh, now 50% more attractive to enemies, so pretty big buff to that grenade. A lot of people are happy about that because it's a pretty good grenade and it's just been rather ineffective for a long time now so it's gonna make all of the scouts grenades a pretty good option now and now for the driller changes which i'm very excited for the cryo cannon the max ammo of the base weapon has been increased the bonus from the larger pre larger pressure chamber mod has been increased. And for those that haven't played Gunner yet or might not be familiar with what that mod does is in tier 1, larger pressure chamber increases the pressure drop rate. So what it does is it lets you shoot a longer time before needing to refill the pressure chamber. So essentially what that means is that you can shoot longer before you have to stop because of the weapon's limitations. It'll just like overheat basically. <clears throat> and then the bonus from the tier one larger reserve tank, or sorry, tier two larger reserve tank has been increased from 50 extra tank size to 75. So you'll be able to shoot the gun more. And then probably the biggest change I think that's coming and maybe a lot of people might not think it's going to be as big as it is, is that any swarmer, which is the little bugs that are extremely annoying, especially on uh, the lethal enemies hazard warning where they do more melee damage. So that any swarmer that gets frozen will die. As soon as it gets frozen, it won't come out of freeze with a little bit of health like it does right now. So that is all of the changes that are going to be coming to the weapons with update 32. So what do you guys think about the breach cutter changes? As a reminder, those are uh, the breach cutter changes are going to be an in a decrease to the base magazine capacity. And then some of the mods are going to be less effective. So the tier 2 loosened node cohesion, which increases the width of the uh, breach cutter's laser, is going to be moved to the base of the weapon. So that, uh, that mod's going to be a little bit less effective. The tier 3 line width, line width mod is also going to be replaced with a reload speed mod the base reload of the weapon is going to be worse so the time is going to be time to reload is going to be increased the bonus from the high capacity magazine mod which gives more magazine size is going to be increased to compensate for the base magazine decrease so this mod is actually going to be more effective in tier 2 the expanded ammo bags mod is going to be a is going to have a decreased bonus so that you're going to get less ammo from this mod the hitbox height of triple split line in tier 5 is going to be decreased so that's going to change up quite a few of the builds i think because the triple split line which made th the laser instead of being one 
flat laser is going to be it the mod makes it three smaller width lines stacked on top of each other so it's going to be a little bit less effective and then the lightweight casings high voltage crossover spinning death and inferno overclocks are going to match the new magazine capacity <clears throat> so what do you guys think are you guys gonna change up what you currently run on the breach cutter i think what i specifically will change with the breach cutter is going to so what i typically run is high capacity magazine in tier one which increases the magazine size by two right now and what i think i'm gonna change um Actually, I don't think I'll change off of that since that's going to be increased in effectiveness. The other option in tier one is prolonged power generation, which increases the projectile's lifetime so it can travel farther before um, disappearing. But I also, in tier two, I think I'm going to change off expanded ammo bags since that's going to be getting... Um, a nerf right now it gives an extra eight ammo and i think i'm going to swap off of that to go with either condensed plasma which gives 175 extra damage per second or lo loosened node cohesion which increases the plasma beams width by one meter so i think definitely going to swap off of expanded ammo bags and I think I'll probably go with Condensed Plasma for the increase to damage per second. Do you not run the bigger mag size right now for uh, the Breach Cutter? I think it's I think it's definitely what we'll want to go with. Uh, especially since that's going to be getting a buff. In Tier 3, the Loosen Node Cohesion mod is going to be completely changed. So it's going to be a mod that instead of increasing the beam width of the uh, of the breach cutter, it's going to it's going to improve the reload speed, which is a I think one thing we can take away from the breach cutter changes is that we're getting changes to the base of the weapon that are usually going to make the mods. A little bit more significant so the the mods that people are probably not running are going to be a little bit more impactful but then the mods that everyone always uses are going to be a little bit less effective to kind of make all of the mods in a particular tier more balanced in pick rates i think it's going to make a bigger difference too especially with um with dps because the magazine size is going to be a pretty big um pretty big change to your damage per second because you'll be able to get out more beams from the breach cutter no changes to tier four but then we've also got i think it's going to be i think it's a pretty big change to the triple split line and i might not run it the height of the three lines is going to be as big so it's going to be a little less harder to hit literally every enemy in a tunnel because of how high the beams stack right now you could hit swarmers on the ground and then web spitters on the ceiling with how crazy the the beam height can be so i think i might swap off of that um depending on how how less the height of the beams are now I think I'd probably change it to probably change it to plasma trail which leaves a residual trail of plasma that will continuously damage enemy any enemy that gets too close so I think I'd probably run that it would be effective in crowd control because if 
um because it's kind of like sticky flame where it leaves damage that if an enemy passes through it it'll it'll damage them and then it'll also help a little bit with single target damage depends on the reload speed the breach cutter on the breach cutter though as it's super slow it would be with super with born ready but it's another second or so be good to turn the fast reload yeah i that's a good point i think it'll i think you're right it'll probably depend on depend a little bit on how bad the reload speed is now i do I do have some builds where I run quick to play in tier 3, which is where the new reload speed change will be. Um, so depending on what the reload speeds will look like, I might still run quick to play. But yeah, running born ready might be a pretty good option. And then you always run plasma trail. Yeah, Plasma Trail is pretty good. I just really like the triple split line for Dreadnought fights because it's basically impossible to miss and it'll pass through the armor and the body of the Dreadnought and then come out the back and hit the weak point. And just this way I know that it's not going to miss and it's going to hit all of that and do all of that damage. What do you guys think about the sentry gun changes to the engineer? The base damage is going to be increased from 5 to 6. And Gemini system is now going to have an extra 90 ammo. And defender system, the damage bonus is going to be changed from, per, from a percentage to a flat plus 5. So I think, I think the Gemini system with the... Which is the... You can run two sentry turrets, so you can place two sentry turrets instead of one. I think that might be worth considering a little bit more now. I'm still a little hesitant, I think, to run that just because the beauty and the effectiveness of the sentry turret, I think, comes when you don't have to worry about it at all you just place it and it just does its job but with gemini system i think you have to micromanage it a little bit more the ammo capacity on the gemini system so each sentry has a little bit less uh ammo in it but it, it might be it might require less micromanaging because it'll have each sentry turret will have um, more ammo on it so it'll probably just come down to how you vibe with it. I think if you're fine with micromanaging Gemini system a little bit, so you'll have to go to your sentry turret a little bit more than if you ran defender system, which is just the single uh, sentry turret. So if you run to your sentry turrets a little bit more to reload them, it might be worth considering. The Gemini system is a welcome change since each turret has 90 mag size, so it's another full turret. Yeah, exactly. So the the defender system, even with its nerf to damage, I think I still might run that. Um, let me. Let me pull up the sentry turret so we can talk a little bit about the damage changes. So for those that might not be super familiar with the engineer, the Gemini system is a tier one mod that lets you place a second sentry turret and defender system is a tier five mod, which right now but will be changed tomorrow right now it does a 100 percent damage bonus increase and 
tomorrow. It'll basically be a, what's the percentage? So it's, it's going from five damage per bullet to six. So instead of a hundred percent damage buff that defender system gives right now, it'll be a 20%. I think that's a pretty good change because right now the other option in tier four other than defender system is Hawkeye system, which increases the range of the turrets by 15, me 15 meters so they can hit enemies that are farther away. And you also have manual targeting with the sentry. So if you pull out your laser pointer, you can click on enemies and have the sentry turret focus them. So this might make Hawkeye system be a little bit more uh seen by people because i i don't think i've ever seen anybody run hawkeye system hawkeye system should be able to shoot rockets like bosco i f so the they actually have a mod that does that but it's on the warthog so on the warthog shotgun for the engineer in tier 5 he has a mod called turret whip when you shoot the turret it'll shoot an overload shot that does 120 explosive damage yeah i'm gonna be running the defender system still since i forgot to reload that thing enough already having two would only be worse for me yeah exactly that's kind of my thoughts right now is that the gemini system it's just a little bit too much to micromanage. And this is coming from someone that I can be really lazy during a mission and just not drop a sentry turret at all and just focus on killing stuff with the Warthog. So yeah, I I don't I don't think I'll I don't think I'll make a hard switch to Gemini system. Even with the changes, it's just not how I want to play. Even if it'll ultimately probably be just as competitively, competitively viable. What do you guys think about the grenade changes? So the lure grenade on the engineer no longer will take friendly fire. I think that's I think that's a very good change. It's kind of silly how you can just kill your grenade or someone else's just by shooting it and it's only got 50 health which is about a third of the health of a, a dwarf to kind of put into perspective i don't like how open you are to attack with gemini how do you mean game ninja do you just mean like you're vulnerable when you have to go reload the turrets and <clears throat> the other grenade change is the pheromone canister. It's going to be a lot more effective now. It's going to be 50% more attractive to enemies. So it was always kind of a meme, the pheromone canister on the scout. You would throw it and enemies would just be like, nah, I'm good. And it's kind of like the lure grenade on the engineer where its intention is to distract enemies and the attractiveness of the pheromone grenade also i believe it 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 causes enemies to attack each other yeah exactly so the pheromone canister should be quite a lot more effective it'll have enemies attacking each other now i wish you could strafe around to turret the turret while while reloading it yeah that'd be that would be kind of a good change. I think you'll probably have to, if you want to run Gemini, you'll probably have to um, just make the time to reload quickly and you'll probably have to do one turret early and then wait to do the second one. Because right now, the ammo in the gemini system turrets isn't very large but they're basically doubling the ammo of each one so you won't have to reload as often so you can probably space them out to get the reload off being able to strafe around a turret would be huge 
you could avoid so much damage and have your gun up and running. If that ever happens, I may consider Gemini, but still a lot of micromanaging. Yeah, I agree. I I like the idea, but I don't know if they should do something like that because I think Engineer as a class has always had a lot of stuff going on for it. So having to like stay positioned in one spot to reload, I think kind of balanced a lot of the positives that you get with the engineer. And then how about the cryo cannon? I think there's probably not much of a reason at all to run the flamethrower. I've up until now, I've always recommended the flamethrower over the cryo cannon. And I think what's changed is that the build that I like to use the most, the which is just going with raw damage, isn't going to be as effective with how... Or it'll still be just as effective, but I think the cryo cannon will be able to do that just as well, but a little bit easier. And... The flamethrower, I've always thought, is a lot easier to use for beginners. But with some of the changes that are coming to the cryo cannon, I think the cryo cannon is almost on the same exact level uh, for beginners as the flamethrower now. And again, the cryo cannon changes are that the max ammo of the base weapon is going to be increased, which is which is easily like the biggest change coming to the cryo cannon because of how uh like a glaring weakness i always thought of the of the cryo cannon is that it just runs out of ammo and for beginners this is usually um the biggest reason why they don't use it or just average players in general the reason why they don't use it is that they just run out of ammo and they have to think a little bit more than they probably want or Definitely have to think about their ammo management more than the flamethrower. I think I would still run the cryo cannon in glacial strata over the flamethrower just because I've been working on the EPC mining build so I can do that a lot better than I used to. And that pairs really well with the cryo cannon. So I think I can do more with the cryo cannon and EPC mining build together that the slight damage buff increase that I would get using the flamethrower in the glacial strata region, I think I would, I would still use that combo. For me, the cryo cannon wasn't something I was into as it didn't have the damage that the flames did. With the swarmer insta kill and more ammo, it is gonna be something I'm gonna learn a bit more. Yeah, 100% Ranger. I've been using it a lot more in the last couple weeks since I saw the changes that were coming to the Swarmer Freeze as well as the buffs that were coming with the Cryo Cannon in general. And then I've just been using the EPC mining build with it and it just pairs together really, really well. Yeah, Game Ninja and uh, Glacial Strata, the enemies are resistant to cold and weak to heat. So I think even with the damage resistance they would have to the cryo cannon I think I would still use it just because you can freeze the enemies about as quickly and so like the way I use the cryo cannon and I think the way everyone should use the cryo cannon is they should use the cryo cannon stream just long enough to freeze enemies and then use the rest of their kit to kill them once they're frozen. So you'll be a lot more efficient with the weapon. That way you'll save ammo. Yeah, so what I what I do now is I use the entire kit. So I'll freeze enemies. I'll use the impact axes on bigger targets. Like I'll freeze a Praetorian or an Oppressor. And then I'll use the really quick burst damage that the impact axes have to get rid of them. But if it's like a group of enemies, 
I will freeze them all as quickly as possible. Like, I won't do any any more freezing or try and do any more damage with the Quarrel Cannon. I'll just freeze them. And then I pull out the EPC and I'll shoot a charge shot into, like, the open area that's in the middle of most of them. And then I'll shoot it again to detonate it and kill them all. Would you consider running Fragile with the new Cryo Cannon? Um, it's a good question. I really like the Cold Radiance instead of Fragile, just because you can freeze enemies that are within five meters of you quicker. Um, And for those that don't know what Fragile is in Tier 5 of the Cryo Cannon, Frozen targets um, have a chance to spontaneously shatter. <clears throat> I think it is... So even without the changes, I think Fragile is worth considering to use just because having an enemy die when you freeze it instead of just staying frozen and then becoming unfrozen i think that's always a a good option that makes fragile worth using i just prefer so even with the changes to the cryo cannon i think fragile is worth using i just use cold radiance a lot more because i uh want to just freeze enemies as quickly as possible so then i can finish them since it's area damage, isn't the frozen damage buff null for thing containment field? Uh... So... It's not exactly null, but the, the main benefit of using the freeze to... Using the freeze and the thin containment field on the EPC is that you freeze the enemy so they stop moving and they're all probably going to be close together because what messes up thin containment field the most and just EPC mining in general is when you shoot the charge shot something gets in the way before you want it so when something gets in the way of that charge shot it'll detonate early which is like the most annoying thing because you want it to go in a specific place and having it detonate early just kind of ruins it so that's that's why i would still use the the cryo cannon and the epc combo even in something like glacial glacial strata where the flamethrower would do a little bit more damage on enemies but i'm i'm super looking forward to the changes with with the cryo cannon i think a lot more people will be invited to use it and hopefully that'll also get people wanting to run the EPC and even if it doesn't the Savada is still a very good option when combined with the cryo cannon I think you just won't be able to when comparing the Savada and EPC when you use the cryo cannon the Savada is just a little bit slower at crowd control because you can only hit one enemy at a time so you would have to shoot each enemy a couple times uh, to clear a group of enemies on you but with the EPC you can just shoot a charge shot and explode it and kill all of them my driller friend runs EPC and a flamethrower mmm I I could see that being a good option Especially when he knows how to use the EPC to mine with. I think... <clears throat> I think the EPC is like always good to use. And especially good to use if you can use it for utility as well. So with EPC mining, you can mine any mineral. You can get nitra, gold, morkite, anything. Even, even stuff that's out of the way for the driller or or would typically require an engineer to put a platform and a scout to grapple to i'm thinking of going cryo and epc with the e with the new update though yeah 
I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a EPC mining guide go up probably early next week since I'm a little behind on the videos that I wanted to make. I wanted to get a couple videos out this week on update 32 stuff. But I'll probably have the EPC one coming out next week as well as the the overclock I think you should use for that build. I really want to see more people using the cryo cannon EPC because I think um, I think one it's really fun to use because it didn't, it takes a little bit more skill and thoughtfulness than the flamethrower and sabata takes. So I think it'll be good to see people trying to improve their skill at the game a little bit, and it just feels really worn. Re, just feels really rewarding. What are some of the other big changes? Oh, the M1000 Classic on the Scout. I think, I think I'm 100% gonna change what I use in Tier 2 because of the changes that are coming on the M1000 Classic. So the big change that's happening is that in Tier 2, fast charging coils is gonna be less effective. And what this mod does is the fo it, it increases the focus speed of the weapon and some of that increased focus speed is just going to be moved from the mod and moved to the base weapon. <clears throat> so the other option in tier 2 is better weight balance, which improves the hip shot accuracy. So I think I'm definitely going to switch to better weight balance because I, I currently use fast charging coils, which gives a 1.6. 1.6 focus speed buff, so that's a 60% increase to the speed. I use that right now because it helps me <clears throat> land stuns on priority targets like Praetorians and Menaces. But if that's going to be less effective and the base weapon is just going to be better at that in general, then I'll definitely switch to better weight balance to get... Uh, the better hip shot accuracy because I almost always just use the weapon in hip ac hip shot accuracy mode or in hip shot mode. Um, the ammo bonus of expanded ammo bags in tier one has also been increased. I think I think that is going to be something i'm very curious to see how it'll change the um the breakpoints some so right now i use increased caliber rounds in tier one which gives a 20 percent flat damage buff and right now expanded ammo bags increases the max ammo by 32 but that like even in even right now expanded ammo bags is kind of tempting in tier one just because you can get more ammo um so having that buffed i think i think that's gonna be very tempting to swap to and for the people that like swear by the electrocuting focus shot build which is you basically just group up all of the enemies together and you use the electrocuting focus shot overclock which focus shots from the m1000 electrocute targets at the cost of a reduced focus shot damage so what people use with this build is they stack a bunch of ammo uh, because the focus shots take two shots each so you're going to be going through ammo more than if you're just using hip hip fired shots and what they do is they shoot the focus shots into the clump of enemies so it hits as many enemies as possible with super blow through rounds which increases the amount of enemies that the bullets will go through And the main 
benefit for using this build is that one enemies um, when they are electrocuted they take a little bit of damage over time but more importantly they take like an 80% movement speed debuff so so enemies that move towards you will move a lot slower and with every um, with all of the enemies being basically melee enemies and them having to move slower than you while uh, electrocuted that's gonna be a very nice that EPC mining is crazy makes me feel useless as a scout yeah and a lot of times when I EPC mine the scout will like get in the way and he'll, t he'll take a bunch of friendly fire damage the skill floor for EPC mining is still gonna be just the same so I predict not a ton of people will make the switch but a few more will definitely switch because of the cryo cannon changes and then some more people might swap after the video I post on the guide to them. I've been using your favorite build for the M1K for a bit now and the one thing that upsets me is it goes through ammo like crazy. When the changes go through, if I were to keep using it, I would swap the damage for more ammo and have better hit fire shots so it would do less base damage but be more accurate. So, so the reason why I use the mods that I do in that build is that, um, and it might not make a difference in hazard level three and below but in hazard level four and five <clears throat> i use those mods so that i can one shot grunts with in in i can one shot grunts when i hit their weak points with the shot so you might want to so if you haven't already downloaded the drg dps calculator Actually, I can, I can look at that now. So, the Scout M1000 Classic Hipfire. So, I use increased caliber rounds for fast charging coils, extended clip, hollow point bullets, and hitting it where it hurts. So, I'm going to set the difficulty scaling to hazard level 5. So, right now... Grunts die in one hit fired weak point shot. Guards take two and slashers take two weak point shots as well. If you change increased caliber rounds in tier one to expanded ammo bags, you now go from a one shot kill to. Or sorry, the. Grunts will still be one shot, but guards will now take three and slashers will still take two. So you start to see it takes more ammo to kill things, the more health that an enemy has. So it might be fine to swap to expand in ammo bags um, because you'll, you'll have more ammo more ammo to make up for how many more bullets it's gonna take to kill enemies. But the one change that might hurt a little bit is that if you swap from increased caliber rounds to expanded ammo bags, you won't be able to one-shot web spitters from the body. So with that build, you're able to one-shot web spitters no matter where you hit them. But with the change to expanded ammo bags, it'll have to be a weak point shot, which can be a little tough to hit with the way web spitters path. Ooh, this song is pretty good. I typically don't listen to the song with like the words in them because I typically listen to this music when um, picking songs for videos to have in the background.
Let's see, what haven't we talked about? What changes? I don't think there's too much to be said about the deep core PGL changes that are coming to the engineer. Those are basically just armor breaking changes. So the base armor breaking has been increased to 100%. The incendiary compound mod will now break armor when dealing direct damage. The some of the nails and tape uh, bonus area of effect as we move to the base damage or move to the base weapon. Yeah, I think I think even with the changes that are coming to the PGL, they're not going to switch up the builds that I use on it very much, if at all. I think the changes that we're seeing are just going to make the question of whether you should run the Breach Cutter or the PGL a bit better of a question to answer. Because right now, the answer to that question is you should probably always run the Breach Cutter instead, unless you're using an overclock like Fatboy to make the PGL just ridiculous. Yeah, the one shot on guards won't make much of a difference just because with the extra ammo you'll just be able to uh, just spam shots out and kill them and make up for the loss of damage that way. But for web spitters, yeah, I think that would definitely be annoying. It might not be it might not be so bad that you shouldn't switch to expanded ammo bags. It just might be something you're gonna have to be more aware of that when you see a web spitter, you're gonna have to make sure you go for a weak point shot instead of just trying to go for a, a body shot. We went over the sentry, sentry gun changes, the lore changes, is definitely a pog no more friendly fire damage that makes it end prematurely deep core pgl is just some changes to make the question of if you should go with the breach cutter or the pgl a little bit better to answer a couple changes to the pgl's overclocks just kind of make them um make the hyper propellant overclock a little bit better competitively to uh, the other overclock options. So hyper propellant overclock is going to have an increase to direct damage with an ammo penalty. And the crosshair is going to be modified and it now has impact, to fail, impact effects and a trail. So I think that's more of just a visual thing. Not really much of a buff or a nerf and then the rj250 compound overclock is just going to be more consistent and easier to understand visually lots of changes to the breach cutter just to make the question again of if you should use the pgl the breach cutter better to answer and by better to answer i mean a little bit more interesting to decide which one to go to instead of just automatically defaulting to the breach cutter. The only change to the gunner is the combat mobility overclock and the auto cannon is overall I think it's getting a pretty nice buff. It's getting an increased movement speed bonus, accuracy bonus, um reload speed bonus and the damage penalty it currently has is going to be replaced with a magazine capacity nerf so right now that damage nerf that it does 
is it's so every bullet does minus two damage right now and with the change it'll no longer reduce your damage which is a very good change scout i think we went over the m1k changes pretty well the zakov nuk 17 changes are an increased bonus to expanded ammo bags in tier one some of the damage from increased caliber rounds in tier three has been moved to the base weapon yeah so the zakov nuk 17 changes i think nothing really is going to change for me with that it'll be a little it might be a little bit less effective right now you can basically one shot enemies like a oppressor or one clip i should say you can basically one clip a oppressor if you put an ifg grenade on it and you um, get the damage bonus while an enemy is trapped inside the ifg you could one sh one clip an oppressor and i think you might not be able to do that <clears throat> with the tier 3 increased caliber range nerf. Sis, what are you um what are you looking forward to most on the I don't know if you've gone through like all of the weapon changes, but what are you looking forward to most on the changes? I'm 100% looking forward to the cryo cannon changes the most. The cryo cannon is going to have an increased max ammo um, on the base weapon. <clears throat> and the bonus from larger pressure chamber mod and larger reserve tank are going to be better. So I think we're going to see a lot more people using the cryo cannon over the flamethrower, which I think is very good to see because the flamethrower has up until this point been what I recommend to most people because it's just so much easier to use and use with any level of competency that you'll be pretty effective with but now that the crowd cannon is going to be better for new players and average players i think i will probably be recommending the cryo cannon for more people than i do now yeah i would say cryo cannon or the hyper propellant overclock cryo really needed these changes i completely agree and almost Almost no one uses the cryo cannon. It's definitely a gun that gets used more in like the upper extremes of the community. Like the people that are min maxing to the absolute swear by the cryo cannon and have been this whole time. But I think it's just never been a weapon for the people. So like the average to beginner players, I think it's just never been um, something that has been as important or easy to use and use well as the flamethrower all right well i think we covered everything pretty well all of the nerves and buffs